Have you ever wondered why the American English accent is different from the Indian English accent? Accents, intriguing as they are, are an essential part of our identity. They are like a unique melody that accompanies our words, adding color and texture to our speech. But what makes these accents so distinct? It's a fascinating blend of culture, history, and geography that shapes the way we articulate our words. However, these charming differences can sometimes pose challenges, particularly when we cross borders. Imagine the situation of Indian students or professionals moving to the U.S. They carry their unique accent, a melodious symphony of the Indian subcontinent, which can sometimes sound like a foreign tune amidst the jazz of American English. These differences, while sometimes challenging, add to the rich tapestry of global communication. So, let's delve deeper and explore the differences between these two accents, shall we? One of the key differences between the American and Indian English accent lies in pronunciation. Dive into the intriguing realm of accents and you'll find a world rich with diversity. Accents are like the colorful threads weaving the tapestry of language. Each one unique, each one adding its own flavor. Today, we're exploring the American accent and the Indian accent, two distinct threads in this linguistic tapestry. Let's start with a simple example, the word water. In American English, the R at the end is pronounced, making it sound like water. But in Indian English, the R is often silent, so it sounds more like wada. And then there's the ever-present T sound. In the American accent, the T in words like butter or better often changes to a D sound, transforming into butter and better. But in Indian English, the T remains a T, crisp and clear. Vowel sounds also vary. Take the word hot, for instance. In the American accent, the O sounds like a making it hat. However, in Indian English, the O sound is more rounded, hence hot. The A sound in words like dance or bath is another interesting one. In American English, it's a short A sound, so we get dance and beth, but in Indian English, it's a longer A, hence dance and bath, and we can't forget about the Z sound. In American English, the Z in zero is pronounced as Z, but in Indian English, it's pronounced as Z. These are just some of the ways pronunciation differs between the American and Indian English accent. And while these differences can sometimes lead to confusion, they also add to the richness and diversity of our global language tapestry. So, as you can see, there's quite a bit of difference in the way words are pronounced. But that's not all. Let's move on to another crucial aspect, the intonation. Intonation, or the rise and fall of voice while speaking, also varies greatly between American and Indian English. Now picture a roller coaster. American English is like that ride with a lot of ups and downs. There's a distinct rise and fall in the voice, giving a melodic quality to the speech. For instance, when Americans say, I can't believe it's already December, the pitch rises on can't believe and falls on December. In contrast, Indian English is more like a scenic train ride with fewer ups and downs. It has a relatively flat intonation, maintaining a steady pitch throughout. So, the same sentence in Indian English would have a constant pitch, like a straight train track. These differences might seem small, but they can significantly impact how your speech is perceived. Intonation can change the meaning of a sentence, so it's important to understand and adapt. Now, let's discuss the last point. Stress patterns. Stress patterns, or the emphasis on certain syllables in a word, can also vary between the two accents. Now let's dive a little deeper into this fascinating aspect. In English, we often stress certain syllables in a word to convey specific meanings or to distinguish between similar words. For instance, invent and inventory might sound similar, but in American English, the stress falls on the first syllable in invent, while in inventory, it's on the second. In Indian English, however, the stress patterns might differ, sometimes leading to confusion or misunderstanding. For instance, in words like university or economics, the stress often falls on different syllables in American and Indian English. Identifying these differences and adjusting your stress patterns can be a game changer. It's not just about mimicry, it's about clarity, comprehension, and effective communication. So practice, listen, and learn. Understanding stress patterns can greatly improve your pronunciation and make your English sound more natural to American listeners. In conclusion, while the American and Indian English accents have their unique characteristics, understanding these differences can enhance communication and mutual understanding. We've explored pronunciation, intonation, and stress patterns, highlighting how these elements shape the distinct accents. It's not about changing who you are, but about broadening your communication skills. 
Remember, an accent doesn't define your skills or intelligence, it's just a part of your identity. Embrace it, learn from it, and keep improving your communication skills. Until next time.